Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to work on a video of something people have been asking for, and that's a preamp and or a phono stage. And to use vinyl with one of these tube amplifiers, you need one of these things, which is a phono stage. And this is a little one I built that it's in a 6x14 aluminum chassis. And it's got the RCA inputs here in the front from the turntable. This is the, for the ground wire. Here the outputs are here on the top. And it's sitting right here next to my amplifier, which is one of the reasons that all my amps have the photo inputs on the side, or the RCA inputs on the side, so I can run short little interconnects that just go from the photo stage and over to my amplifier. Got the power transformer in the back, power switch here on the top. On the back, we got our IEC connector that's got the integral fuse in it, and I'll show you all the inside of it here in a minute. This is a design that goes back a couple of decades. It's a Chinese, the board I used was a, a Chinese clone of this circuit that was had just been published all over. You could build this point to point, but there is a lot of connections in it. And I decided to just use one of these boards off eBay's. It was actually a kit that came with all, or supposed to be all the parts to build it with. These are designed to use 12 AX7 tubes, which is a very common, easily available tube, both new old stock and in, you know, brand new ones. But really what these need is what's called a 7025. And this is a low noise variant of a 12AX7. Electrically, they're identical, but these have less hiss and noise in them. And when I first put this together, I tried some 12AX7 tubes. And just like the reason they make these, there was noise and hiss. And you could hear that noise from where I normally sit to listen to music. And so I ended up with, I tried some of these new stock electroharmonics uh, 7025s and they sounded good. No, there's nothing wrong with these, but I ended up going with two RCAs and a Motorola in my actual preamp. And I tried three RCAs and there's something about having this Motorola in the first position that I thought really enhanced the high end without making it too harsh. Again, two rollings, two rollers dreams. You got three positions and you can swap them around and play around with it until it fits your setup and your photo cartridge and whatever else is in your system. So, I'm going to zoom in now on the amplifier and kind of go over the build in more detail. As you can see, one of the interesting things about this amplifier is that the tubes are recessed into the chassis with just the very top of the tube sticking out with enough to grab on and, and remove them so you can ch exchange the tubes without having to take the phono stage apart. And as you can see, the phono jacks are going to come out of the top, and I think it needs to be done like this, both for ease of assembly and for hum prevention as you build this design. The one thing that I will fault this with is I built this one in one piece with the power supply integrated with the preamp, all on the same board. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about there. And it's why I want to build another one. This one actually has a little bit of hum with a, with the sound completely off. You can only hear it if you're standing like right next to the speaker, but it's there. Once you get to the listening position in the room, you can't hear it at all. And so 
I don't think it's really detracted from my enjoyment of this, but the anal retentive side of me wants to resolve this problem. I will show you a couple of things that I learned along the way in the build. One of the mistakes I made when I first put it together was these leads right here. And let me see if I can zoom in on this. So you can see these wires here that are coming from the transformer up to the board. These blue, these green and these red wires. When I first assembled this, I should know better, but I didn't twist these AC wires going from the transformer up to the board and it hummed like crazy. I mean, it was really loud. And I was thinking, oh crap, this is gonna be terrible. But then I remembered I forgot to do my lead dress. And when I twisted these together pretty tightly, 90% of that hum went away. So that led me to believe that the majority of the noise that I was getting out of this is still related to this AC being too close to the rest of the circuitry in the preamp. And this preamp board is designed where you can build it as one piece like I did, or it's perforated here where you can split it and put the power supply in a separate location from the preamp itself. There's so much gain that's happening in this preamp. This isn't for a moving coil Phono cartridge. this is for the moving magnet type. For a moving coil type, you'll need a step-up transformer before this phono stage. But there's plenty of really good sounding moving magnet phono cartridges, and I'll go over that sometime when we look at my turntable. But this phono stage sounds amazing. So as you can see, the board's screwed in. It's on little metal standoffs here that hold it away from the chassis top. And it was spaced down just enough where the tubes would peek out of the top. And that depends on which chassis you use, what length of standoffs that you need to use. On this end, you can see where the RCA inputs come in with very short wires that jump right down to the the printed circuit board and there's a main ground spot here on the front of the board that you can run the jumper over to that grounds the chassis and that's also where your turntable's ground wire will hook up to. On my setup, without the ground wire hooked up, there's massive hum between the turntable and this, the ground loops setup. And so it absolutely needs this ground wire connection to be nice and quiet with my turntable. Little chokes mounted here in the back. The other thing that I ended up doing was mounting a capacitor across the power switch here because it was doing a really loud click or a pop when you turn it on or especially when you would turn it off. And this capacitor suppresses the pop that you get when you turn the power off and I'll put this value in the description. And here's our IEC connector. Like I said, here's the choke and these are the wires that come out of the power transformer. So next I'm going to open up, I bought another one of these kits and so we'll do a unboxing or unbagging here and I can show you what it comes with and what the board looks like. It comes shipped in a box like this with styrofoam with the board in it and then the board's inside a plastic bag like this and my first one it had the full length board in the package but this one during shipping it somehow got split along the perforations here that are designed to split the board into two parts that that one of them is the power supply and this one is the 
um, the actual preamp itself. And it comes with the resistors populated in all their positions. But I will warn you that these are not super high quality parts. Several of the resistors were way out of spec. And so make sure that you measure every resistor to make sure that it's what's printed on the board so that you know you're building the circuit correctly and everything's being biased right. Particularly these resistors in this area here seem to be way out of whack. The other thing they supply, which I am not a fan of, is they've got carbon comp resistors that are at the input, across the input, that sets the input impedance for the phono stage, which is super important. The input impedance has to match your phono cartridge. So usually, I believe it's 47K is what most phono cartridges are, but look up the specs on your cartridge and then get a really high quality metal film resistor that's maybe a 1% resistor to put in this location so you know that the input impedance of the phono stage matches the cartridge that you're going to use. So let's look at some of the rest of the parts that come in the kit. I'm going to dump, these, dump this bag out too. And it comes with a... A bunch of these, here's the power, a lot of these are the power supply capacitors, which when you look at them, you think, ooh, they're Nikki Khan Auto uh, audio caps. No, these are some Sam Young. I mean, they're trying to do a ripoff name on Samsung. So they're Sam Young that are colored like Nikki Khan caps. Honestly, I think in my second build, I'm going to replace almost all of these parts with higher quality components. I'm going to get some Nikicon caps for all these ones that are in the power supply. Here are some of the caps that come for, that are the coupling caps. There's these little yellow guys, which some people swear by. I'm not a big fan of them. And then it comes with, I believe these are the little um, Russian oil caps again not a huge fan of some people swear by them i'm sure it would work fine building it with all these parts as long as you ensure that the values of these resistors are right the other thing i did in my first build that i'm going to do with this one too because some of these resistor values were so far out of whack i bought some high quality mica caps for these ones that are part of the tone circuit because if these are off it's going to sound all wonky and I believe these are another couple of caps that I didn't end up using in mine when I first put it together I built it with these caps that it came with and then I know I'm going to sound like a broken record but I took it back apart and I replaced it with my favorite Mundorf oil aluminum caps and it sounded like a different preamp and it really sounded good so again you can build it with the stuff that it comes with but i think it's worth upgrading some of these parts to come up with a really high-end device and then here's the bag with the tube sockets the rectifier uh, the, all the diodes that are going in it and I believe this transistor is part of the voltage regulation. One of the things that I wasn't real happy about is the this transistor they sent and the one that the preamp was designed to use aren't the same. And this is a lower value one than the one that's printed on the board and is in the schematics that I've seen for this. Unfortunately, they don't make this transistor anymore, but there's new old stock ones on eBay. So I bought a couple of those and put them in this when I was building it. And then the other thing I did is I bought this little small 
metal heat sink. Let me zoom in here. I bought one of these small little heat sinks that I clipped onto that transistor just to help it stay cool. So what I'm planning on doing is putting the power supply in one chassis and putting the preamp itself in another one so I can separate them, put some distance between them, and they're in two different metal enclosures, which I hope will help eliminate the last little bit of this hum that I'm hearing. And I'm going to connect them together with some sort of, you know, like umbilical cord kind of a thing. I'm not sure if I'm even going to bother with having them where they, like, plug in or plug out, just may hook a cord between the grommets and, you know, put knots in the ends of the cords on each end. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that, but that's kind of my plan for this. This was a 6x14, and then the new ones, it needs a little bit on each end. So it needs to be at least like a 6x, probably a 6x10 for the preamp itself. And I think the power supply could be in a little smaller one. So I think like a... A 6x5 would probably work. So I'm going to look and see what Hammond has available. I think that's about it for covering the this photo stage and showing you the parts that are in it. So I think while I'm waiting on parts for my other builds and videos, we're going to jump into working on this photo stage, designing it, coming up with how we're going to lay it out like was shown earlier and get some parts ordered so that we can put this thing together and let you all see how to build one of these for yourself. Hopefully you enjoy my channel. If you like my videos, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you soon for the next installment of my Phono Stage Project Build. Have a great day.